All right. Well, listen, we're live on Facebook, so uh, we can keep talking to ourselves. We can talk to the thousands of people out there that have been tuning into us every morning at 830 and listening to Conrad tickle the ivories. My name is Adam Handler. I am your case handler. I'm a partner of Paul, Paul Isaac DeSico. I am handling the personal injury cases and I have with me, as always, uh, Nelson the Maverick Madrid. And why do I say not uh, Conrad the Maestro Paul? Because Conrad wasn't on this morning, so he isn't with me as always. He was dealing with a client issue earlier today and demanded to be heard and, and, and fill in some amazing news we have for you guys. Uh, I'm wearing my, uh, my shades this afternoon because uh, we're feeling good. We're really excited about a very important decision that came down today from the Supreme Court from almost an unlikely, uh, unlikely source. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome you to the afternoon PM session of Cruising with the Case Handler. We are Pollock Pollock Isaac DeSico. Our phone number is 844-774-3529 or 844-PPID law p-p-i-d-l-a-w uh conrad the maestro and pollock the managing attorney of the firm on the show today and it's thursday so that means we have the general alan k the most experienced immigration attorney that is out there giving 100 percent free advice on the on the on the uh facebook uh, on the radio and then of course we are giving out those free consultations to anybody out there that has further questions or wants their specific question answered by a practicing uh, immigration attorney. Our number is 844-774-3529 or 844-PPID-LAW. I see that squeeze just jumped on. There it is. Yeah, we, we caught him off guard a little bit. Uh, we said six o'clock. Hey, man, this was your idea to do the afternoons. This Welcome was to your the party, call. pal. Time out, time out. I got to live up to my stereotypes here. Come on, give me a break here. All right. Oh boy. Gotta live. I'm a Jamaican here. All right. Gotta be a few minutes late. All right. Oh man, everything's. You're late, feeling right? iry, man. Everything's. No problem. We're all good. We're all good. Late. You know. You know the party doesn't start until I show up. You all know what time it is. I'll be on the tables with the bottles in my hand. You know. I've I've been there before. I've seen you with that Dom Perignon, the luminous with the label that that glows, man. Listen, I've man, seen it. You only live once. You only live once. And to be honest, I do believe in the afterlife, but I'm not sure about the afterlife. So I'm making sure I'm living this life, all right? All right. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is Cruising with a Case Handler. I do apologize, seriously, about my tardiness. I actually was on with a client, and I'm quite sure, just like some of us this morning, was dealing with a client, didn't even show up for the show. So I was on with a client. So, you know, I finished up with a client, but I'm here. Powerful show this is. It happens each and every single day. And I want everybody out there that's tuning in right now on Facebook. Thank you so much for joining us. However, before we jump into speaking on personal injury, before we jump into speaking on immigration with these powerful, my operative word today, attorneys, I want everyone, stop what you're doing for a second. Stop even looking at our faces and do me a favor. Start sharing. Everyone, just start sharing right now. Um, Nelson, start sharing. Conrad, start sharing. Alan, start sharing. Adam, start sharing. Everybody who's watching, start sharing. Share the page on at least one friend's timeline. At least one friend. You know, at least one friend. Okay? And, you know, let's just build up the audience here because we know that this is truly the best show when it comes to personal injury and immigration. Why? Because I'm with the best firm, PPID, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. So once again, folks, you can ask your questions here. Um, on immigration. You can ask questions about personal injury. I see everyone is sharing right now. Thank you. Okay. But we are ready to jump in and we already know what we're going to be talking a lot about today. DACA. It's all over the news. What is DACA? We touched on it this morning on 93.5 FM at 830. But right now I've got the attorneys ready, willing, and able to speak to you about it. Okay. What happened? What does it mean when they say it was upheld? All right, spoke with Nelson earlier. He mentioned that to me. I said, yeah, I saw it on the news. What is DACA? What does it mean when it says it was upheld? How long will it be, will it be upheld for? Um, are the people who are under DACA, DACA, DACA safe? What's going on with it? So ladies and gentlemen, let's jump right into the show as you share that link right there in groups, on pages, and on your timelines. Gentlemen, 
welcome again to the show. Sorry about being late again, being profuse about it. Uh, so let's talk. The obvious topic here is DACA. Who wants to jump into it? Tell us what it is and what's happening here. Alan? Well, let me Go start. For it, Alan. Let me start off and I'll turn it over to Nelson because Nelson and I talked about it this morning on the program. And this morning I said there were 650,000 people who are on DACA who are in danger depending upon what the Supreme Court decided. The Supreme Court decided to uphold DACA, to keep DACA in place. And so it's a temporary rest, resting for DACA kids. But the President of the United States has the power to continue the program if he wants to. And he has the power to terminate the program as long as he follows the correct legal process. So you DACA people, you got to rest now, but it's not over. And we're, we need really Congress to act to protect these kids who most we call them dreamers. Nelson, you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, you know, as I said earlier today, <laughs> DACA is basically deferred action for childhood arrivals. What it did was it allowed people who entered the United States as children who were under the age of 15 and were not 31 at the time um, to apply for a work permit. It conferred no legal status on any of these people. Um, with a work permit, many people were allowed to obviously get a social security card as well as a New York state or a, a state driver's license. Um, you know, in, in, in the law, you know, um, it takes, uh, many crimes require what's called a mens rea or a mental intent. You have to know that you're committing a crime. You know, when you're eight or nine years old and your parents, you know, take you across the border, I don't think that any of these children knew what was happening. Um, it was obviously through no fault of their own. Right. What the prior administration did was it basically, again, it gave these people the opportunity to apply for an employment authorization, which allowed many of these people to remain in the United States, um, get an education, get a job, and go on with their lives. Um, you know, unfortunately, um, this administration um, tried to strip them of that. Um, the Supreme Court basically today said that uh, the decision to just strip them of that was basically arbitrary and capricious and that uh, they didn't provide sound reason why the program should be terminated. So I think it is a good win. There are a lot of people who are at least in a much better place today than they were yesterday, not knowing how the court would rule. Um, Conrad, anything you want to add? Well, yeah, I have plenty of things to add, but we only have a limited <laughs> amount of time. But um, uh, in terms of the decision itself, it was a, it's really based on a procedural ground. I mean, it's not a, not a surprise that Trump, the Trump administration, uh, in their infinite, uh, <laughs> I don't want to get political. Um, the Trump administration basically didn't follow the proper procedure. And that's what the Chief Justice Roberts, who was a Republican appointee to the judge, and he sided with the four liberals uh, on the court for five to four decision in favor. Um, he, they, the decision is based on the fact that the Trump administration didn't follow the proper procedure. Uh, they didn't give ju sufficient justification to the lower courts as to why they wanted to get rid of the program. Of course, we all know why they wanted to get rid of the program because they don't want any immigrants here, if at all possible, and they want them, they want to send them home regardless. Plus, um, the Trump administration they viewed this as a bargaining chip. They like to say that the Democrats had a chance to make the DACA program uh, permanent, and that, that it was the Democrats that basically said no, which in one sense is correct. However, the <laughs> the truth is. What the Republicans tried to do with the what Trump, well, it's the Republicans and Trump. Um, what they tried to do was basically use it as a bargaining chip. They were saying, well, if you want to make DACA permanent, we'll do it, but you've got to eliminate uh, chain what they call chain migration. You know, if you want to, if you're if you're a citizen and want to apply for your parents, you can't do that anymore. We're not going to allow that. If you're a sibling and you want to apply for your brother or sister, you're a U.S. citizen, want to bring your brother or sister here, we consider that chain migration. You can't do that anymore. So if you want DACA so bad, you have to give up all of these other categories by which people have been legalizing. And the Democrats, which I happen to agree with was a, the right move, they said, no, we're not going to do that. And the, the, Trump, the Trump administration basically rolled the dice and they said, OK, we're going to court 
and we'll let the Supreme Court decide. And of course, the Republicans thought, because they have a Republican majority, that the Republicans were going to side with them and they were going to win. Only were wrong. They lost and they have now lost their bargaining chip and they're in a weaker position than they were previously. Um, now, in terms of the position, in terms of the program being permanent or not, what, what, what Alan said is correct. Uh, Trump has the ability to uh, prolong the program or to terminate the program. But if they want to fight this decision, they've got to go back to the lower courts and they have to explain to the lower courts why the, why the program should be uh, disbanded. Um, unfortunately, that's going to take a little bit of time and it's going to take a little more time than they have till the election. So therefore, nothing is going to happen until the election. The point is, if Trump gets reelected, DACA will be gone. That's pretty much a surety. If, if Trump doesn't get reelected, DACA will continue, certainly for the next four years following uh, uh, the, the election. Uh, those are the only facts that we know right now. Uh, so if you can vote, get out and vote Democrat. You know, these kids, I mean, they were cheering in front of the Supreme Court. There's 650,000 kids who have benefited from this. And they were going to be stripped of their ability to stay and, and work in the country and sent home off into countries they'd never even been to or they had been to. I'm sorry, they've been there, but prior to their, their 16th birthday. So these are places that these kids don't even remember being. But they were going to be that they That's what the administration was going to do. Go ahead. Possible that they, they don't even have family there anymore, correct? Likely. Not possible. Like well, Conrad, also, the, these are no longer kids. These are adults. Yeah. Well, some. I mean, the program began in 2012, and you had to be under 16 when you were brought to the country, and you had to be under 31 when you applied. So it was eight years ago. So, yeah, I mean, some uh, there were certainly young adults here, and there were some, some, uh, some were in their 30s, some were in their 20s. Um, but, hey, it's great. It's great news. The only ones that are lamenting this decision are the ones that – don't want immigrants in this country, all right? And they lost. You know, we, no, we, I, have to, we have to have this type of conversation over a couple of drinks because you get so passionate. I never knew you were so passionate when you spoke about politics, my friend. Oh, yeah. Let me throw one more you know, thing in there. Adam warned me before we even started the show. Months back. <laughs> well, warned me. He's like, pick up don't one thing get him started. Before. Where Conrad Listen, left off well, and Conrad was talking. Wait, about. Alan, let me just finish this point. Hold, hold your thought for a second. You know, yep. I've been doing immigration, granted. I'm not doing it 60, 70 years like Alan Kay, okay? I admit, <laughs> all right? I'm only doing it half, the, half that amount of time. But I have seen the various administrations come and go. I've seen, I broke in as a lawyer when Reagan was president. I've been there for Clinton and George W. and, and George H. Bush and, and Obama. And, you know, there is never been an administration like this one in terms of how uh, of its callous treatment of immigrants and that's why i am so passionate about it i've seen it all you know i've been there and you know something reagan i wasn't a reagan fan i've always been a lifelong democrat and a liberal i wasn't a reagan fan but the fact is he was good for immigration he was good for immigrants he understood their their plate their place in u.s society and the need for u.s society to have immigrants Probably same thing with george w bush yeah. but the republicans historically, in my opinion, have been better on immigration, stronger on immigration than Democrats have. Trump is the one who has changed, who has changed the dialogue and he's, he, he's uh, victimized them and, and made them the enemy of, of the United States. When in fact, if you look at our declining birth rate and the growing aging, the, 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 our population over 65 is the fastest growing segment of our population. These are, I mean, we need immigrants in this country, whether you like it or not. I mean, the fact is, we need them, right or wrong. We need them. And what we're doing right now, what Trump is doing, and he's not just talking about sending the Mexican rapists home, because he's, which is asinine. Uh, he's not letting any immigrants stay here. He's sending them all back. I mean, H-1s are professional workers with college degrees. They're not getting visas either. He's trying to ban them as well under the pretext that they're taking jobs away from Americans. Same thing with H-2B workers, with unskilled workers, which are picking strawberries and, and picking our apples and cleaning our dishes. He's not letting them in either, as if you know they're taking jobs from, away from American workers, which is nonsense. It's total nonsense. I There, I said my piece. Go ahead, Alan. <laughs> I was saying, that was saying if Trump gets reelected, well, keep in mind, over 5 million people have naturalized in the United States since 2014, including 3.1 million who became U.S. citizens after Trump's election. So these naturalized citizens are among the fastest growing group in recent U.S. history. 
And Dr. if Dr. we Dr. vote Dr. properly against Trump, we won't, the DACA kids won't have to worry and a lot of us won't have to worry. So it's really important if you're an American citizen, if you have friends who are American citizens, you know how you're gonna vote if you wanna save immigration. Absolutely. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we call Cruising with a Case Handler, a special edition that we do occasionally once a week. And it's great that a lot of you are tuning in and turning on where we are concerned on Facebook, my page, David Squeeze Anarchies, and also, of course, the law firm, PPID, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and Seco, And also, of course, the Case Handler's page, Adam Handler. Make sure you check us out each and every single weekday at 8.30 a.m. Check us out tomorrow morning, Friday morning at 8.30 a.m., we will also be talking on personal injury and immigration, ladies and gentlemen. You just heard, of course, what it is that they had to say on, of course, DACA and how it's affecting our community and the fact that it has been upheld. Thanks be to God that that has happened because a lot, I don't even know what would have happened and we could sit here and talk about that all day. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm just very happy that it was upheld. You've got uh, children who came here um, beyond their control at a very young age and to think that they would be returned to their country with nowhere to go and not knowing anyone with a couple of bucks in their pocket, if any, that's destroying their life and destroying also not the future of their lives, but also partially the future of the United States. Because a lot of these, these kids, a lot of these adults now have a lot that they're already contributing to this nation. With that said- And, and, you know, and, and squeeze, you know, again, our president the, views them as a bargaining chip, nothing mm -hmm. more, nothing less. Basically, give me my wall, give me what I want in immigration, and I'll let DACA become permanent. That was his argument, right? He doesn't, he doesn't give a damn about these kids in the future and what they've contributed to this country. Also, many of them serving in our, in our military, by the way. Yep. All right? With it, and all, in, order to, in order to qualify for DACA, you have to be a high school graduate, all right? But these are people that also, and, and, a, and I think a recent tweet, he said, oh, they're not angels or something stupid like that. They're not all the angels that you think they are. You know, the fact is in order to qualify for DACA, you cannot be convicted of a serious crime, all right? Same thing, you need a high school education. You can serve in the military, as I said, many have. These are, look, they're always going to be, what's the quote, a few bad apples, all right? But the fact is, the vast majority of these kids have been productive people in the United States and to send them home Again, just because he views them as a bargaining chip, just it was. Well, he's done a know, lot of really nasty things, but this his, is one. Of, this is at the top of the list. His, his right. ignorance is also overshadowed by his stupidity because he he made a remark and basically said, "Oh, it's pretty obvious." Or I guess the Supreme Court justices don't like me, dude. You're not a lawyer. You don't understand the law. You don't understand the way government works. Like, period. Like, it's a very simple concept. You know, that's the problem. The problem is he thinks, you know, when you deal with someone who thinks that they know everything and they know nothing, that's a problem, you know, because common sense is no longer common sense. <laughs> that's true. All right, guys, listen, I know we have limited time here and um, Adam wants to go eat dinner. So, you know, <laughs> listen, I, I'm, 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 I'm here. I'm here as well, listen, a, uh, let's, a super let's, fan. Let's, by wait, Adam. wait, wait, wait. Before you move <laughs> off from immigration, I, we also had a, another great development today. One of um, our listeners on the show who retained us, who followed our advice mm -hmm. and retained us, um, has just, he's been, obviously I'm not gonna give his name, but if he's listening, he'll know who he is uh, that we're speaking about him. Um, he had been applying for citizenship and the case was taking forever, for years. Anyway, he heard us on the show. So we signed him up, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, Nelson? Well, Conrad, right. it, wasn't, it wasn't so much that the case was taking years. It was they, they basically said he made a false claim to citizenship. Right, that's right. So that's they right. issued a notice of intent to deny. And you could finish the story, Mr. Pollack. <laughs> anyway, he, and he, they issued him a notice of intent to deny. And I think we may even discussed this. When you claim U.S. citizenship, there is no waiver for that. If you lie intentionally and say, you know what, I was a U.S. citizen. In fact, I think I gave an example about a previous client of ours who had made a mortgage application you know, 20 years before, and he, and he said that he was a U.S. citizen on that mortgage application, and the Immigration Service found it, and they tried to deport him for the longest time. For years, they were trying to deport him, but in the end, we won, and we kept him in as a U.S. citizen now. Anyway, similar problem here, potentially. This gentleman was allegedly, uh, immigration alleged that he claimed to be a U.S. citizen, and of course, he didn't, and Nelson, uh, Mr. Madrid, the Maverick, was able to respond to the notice of intent to deny, 
and convinced the immigration service that they were wrong, that he hadn't made that representation. And long story short, our client is scheduled to become a U.S. citizen on Wednesday, next Wednesday. Wow. Is this a client from this show? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yep. Wow. You guys move. You guys don't you can play. We don't, <laughs> we don't sit on cases, man. We don't Whoa. sit on cases. Pandemic, pandemic. And by the, by the way, <laughs> by the way, we technically had more time to respond, but we responded right away. We responded within the deadline. You know, extensions were given for deadlines. We didn't take that extension. We responded when we had to respond and we got the case approved. And uh, I, we, I had my we doubts. Try to get so, him, you know, a true success that, story. On, on, that's on, a serious on, charge. Morning. God, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, holding yeah. out to become yourself to become a U.S. citizen is very, very serious. As Conrad, that's about as bad as it gets. Yeah. it's a serious charge. Right. If if we can um, um, have him come on with the true success story, he doesn't have to use his real yeah. name. That would be great. We do that all the time. You know, um, it's entirely up to him. But that would be well. Great. Let's 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 have him sworn in next Wednesday first. All right. Once he's sworn in, then we'll then we'll bring him on. All right. uh, sounds good to me. <laughs> I just want to say thanks, guys, for helping out. Okay. I really truly want to say thanks for doing that and helping out, you know, um, this is what the show is all about helping people. So I want to say thanks PPID for what it is that you're doing. Also want to say thanks to the case handler. We haven't given you much time on it. I know your food's not getting cold. It's all right, man. Listen, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm here to help. I'm here to bring us all together. I'm here to put together this amazing show. Um, these are my partners. These are my friends. These are excellent attorneys. And if that's something that's important to you and you want to be part of something that's great and part of something that uh, really is trying to make a difference in this world, then you'll have our number saved 844-774-3529 or 844-PPID-LAW. I'm Adam Handler, your case handler. We are Pollock, Pollock, Isaac DeSico, and we thank you so much for cruising with the case handler. I hope everybody tunes in tomorrow at 8.30 a.m., uh, live on 93.5 and uh, if you don't you can just catch us later whenever because social media you can catch us at three in the morning nine at night 12 in the afternoon it don't matter yep it doesn't matter at all and, and as the numbers go up as we're getting off once again gotta remind you okay that the man that you just heard we call him the shark all right whenever by the way you, you know, Look at my whenever, shorts today. Call him the shark. There is, he's actually wearing shark shorts right now. You know, <laughs> so it's, it's amazing. All right. So, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I, listen, man. <laughs> TM, TMI right there, man. You know. <laughs> okay. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. But remember, if you do get hurt, in, you will need the case handler. Adam Handler. He has settled well over one hundred and twenty million dollars in settlements for his clients. I want to thank you, Adam. With that said, um, the number is 844-774-3529. Make me look good. Everyone that's watching this, dial the number now over at PPID. If you need help with immigration, the consultation is 100% free. It's a phone consultation. Free, free, free. Call them at 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Also, of course, if you get hurt in an accident in New Jersey or New York, you will need the case handler because you've got one choice, one chance, and you've got the case handler, Adam Handler. Call him at 844-774-3529. We must remind you that this has been an attorney advertisement and prior results do not guarantee similar outcome. However, they have proven themselves, even in this show today, with helping that brother. Thank you all so much. Catch you tomorrow, Juneteenth. It's a very special day. We'll talk about why tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. on 93.5 WVIP-FM New York and, of course, on the Facebook page that you're watching. Thank you, gentlemen. Alan Kay, Nelson Madrid, Conrad Pollock, Adam Handler, the case handler. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks, guys.